Good evening. It's Tuesday, August 18th, and tonight we get into John chapter 20, which records the resurrection of Jesus, the pinnacle of the Christian faith. The fact that we know now without any doubt and without any hesitation that death has been conquered. Jesus rose from the dead and has promised that all of us who believe in him not only have the forgiveness of sins, but we also will live with him for all eternity in heaven. We might die a physical death here on this earth, but we will live on for eternity with him as we will join him in the resurrection. The Bible speaks of Jesus as being the first fruits of those who will rise and go to heaven. First fruits. We're all, or most of us, are familiar with that type of picture. That first strawberry that start, that begins to ripen in the spring on the bushes as an indication that, oh, more are to come and we look forward to the strawberry pie and the strawberry shortcake. Or that first tomato starting to show color uh, in the garden in the summer months tells us that soon we will have a full harvest of all different types of vegetables from our gardens to be able to enjoy and eat. And we look forward to seeing those first fruits because it is the promise that much more will follow and that we'll be able to enjoy that. Well, that is the way it is with the resurrection. Jesus is the first fruits, and all the believers are those who will follow in the harvest uh, that God will bring upon the earth here as he takes those who believe in him to stay with him forever and in eternity. We read from John chapter 20, beginning at verse 1. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. She saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. She left and ran to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved. They've taken the Lord out of the tomb, she told them, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out, heading for the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and got to the tomb first. Bending over, he saw the linen cloths lying there, yet he did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was following him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there. The cloth that had been on Jesus' head was not lying with the linen cloths, but was folded up in a separate place by itself. Then the other disciple, who arrived at the tomb first, also went, also entered. He saw, and he believed. They still did not yet understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. And then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood outside facing the tomb, weeping. And as she wept, she bent over, looking into the tomb. She taught, saw two angels in white clothes, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and one at the feet. And they asked her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she told them, Because they've taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they have laid him. After she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, though she did not know it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? Supposing he was the gardener, she replied, Sir, if you've carried him off, tell me where you laid him, and I will get him. And Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and replied in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus told her, Do not continue to cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she also told them the things he said to her. Can you imagine being part of that morning? None of us have ever seen somebody who, that we know for sure was dead, come back to life. And yet the disciples had witnessed the crucifixion of Jesus. John himself stayed there at the foot of the cross with the mother of Jesus as Jesus died on that cross. More than likely he was still there when the when the soldiers pierced the side of Jesus, giving the evidence of his death as the, the fluids had separated from his body and began the process of, of breaking down already. And so there was no doubt that he was dead. They knew he was buried in the tomb. And now, on this Easter Sunday morning, he's risen, he, he's alive. And the angels tell Mary, and then Mary actually gets to see Jesus and to touch him 
and to know this isn't a ghost, this isn't something she's imagining, she actually touched him. To know that he was physically there, alive, just as he had been alive a few days earlier, the difference now, though, was that he had gone through death and conquered the grave. He had preached his victory sermon to the souls that were trapped in hell and proclaimed the fact that Satan had lost, completely defeated, as he crushed the power of sin, death, and Satan. And now on this morning, this Easter morning, we see the proclamation of the fact that he has indeed won. The grave is empty. It could not hold him. Satan did not win, could not win, will never win, because Christ is triumphant. And so Easter Sunday for us as Christians is, is a celebration of that triumph of Jesus, but also the fact that as believers, we have been promised that we will share in that victory celebration for all eternity. That victory that will happen in heaven is something that you and I will have a seat at the table to be able to enjoy when the Lord says our time here on this earth is over. And so until then, we need to continue to contend for the faith, to strengthen our faith through the word of God so that as the challenges of this life come against us, we are armed with the promises of God, the strength of God, the courage that God grants through his word to hold the course, to not be swayed, but to keep our eyes focused on the goal that is waiting for all of us, and that is joining Christ in the resurrection. And we pray, dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending Jesus to be our Savior. We thank you that he rose from the dead to prove his victory over sin, death, and Satan, and the promise that you have made that all who believe in him and the work that he accomplished we will have the forgiveness of sins and we will have a place in heaven for all eternity. That the relationship between us and you has now been restored, that sin had destroyed. Now that sin has been overcome, erased from our accounts through forgiveness, nothing separates us from you and the love that you have for us. Oh Lord, please continue to send your Holy Spirit to work through your word to keep us in this faith and to help us to continue to contend for this faith as long as we are here on this earth. May we treasure your holy word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.